Hello students, welcome back to the discussion of electrochemical equilibrium as a part of our course principles and chemical applications of thermodynamics. So what we have seen in this lecture so far that when I am describing the electrochemical reaction equilibrium, what we need to measure is the potential difference E between the two electrodes in a galvanic cell with no current flowing. And I have already mentioned that this is because when we try to extract the maximum amount of electrical work from an electrochemical cell, I would do so under the reversible conditions when it would become equal to the uh, decrease in Gibbs free energy at a given temperature and pressure. And if we introduce the concept of electrochemical potential, we find that this DGTP is related to this electrochemical potential into DNI for each component I in my electrochemical system. And the condition of electrochemical reaction equilibrium is then given in terms of the reaction gives energy which now depends on nu i and mu i tilde for each component i in the reaction mixture and the summation over this or over all the components must go to 0. And we have also shown that under the condition where you can measure the zero current cell potential, in that case the delta R g is equal to minus n f e where n is the number of electrons transferred for the reaction uh, uh, taking place in the cell, f is the Faraday constant. And if I know delta R g, then depending on its value, I should be able to find out the corresponding uh, condition for the spontaneity of this chemical reaction equilibrium or whether for a given composition the system would reach equilibrium or whether for the given composition my cell is going to act as a, uh, uh, an electrolytic cell. With this background in mind, let us go ahead and try to establish the most useful form of equation, all these considerations which is the Nernst equation. So on one hand, I have delta Rg is equal to minus Nfe and on the other hand, I know that delta Rg for the chemical reaction that is taking place in the cell that must be equal to nu i mu i for a given composition of the reaction mixture. Now here in general for any component i, I can write down its chemical potential at a given temperature and pressure to be equal to mu i naught plus RT ln A i. Now what is A i? We have already seen in this course that A i is the activity of the ith component in the electrochemical cell. And obviously when I have A i equal to 1, then mu i must be equal to mu naught, mu i naught. And there are certain conventions that are used and these are if the ith component is in its pure solid phase, then I understand that through the infinitesimal changes during the reaction, there will be no substantial change in the concentration of the solid. As a result, the effective concentration which is the activity is assumed to be equal to unity for that component. Similarly, if I have hydrogen gas in its standard state, which is a very common practice, a uh, uh, very commonly used component in the hydrogen uh, gas electrode, once again I will have Ai is equal to 1. Now the question is how do I match these two relations where on one hand I have delta Rg is equal to minus Nfe and from chemical equilibrium 
studies I know that delta R G equal to nu y mu y summed over all components I present in the reaction mixture. Now in order to do this then I will go ahead and write down that if I equate these two equations I must be having minus n f e equal to nu i mu i summed over all i. That tells me that now I can replace this mu i by this expression and therefore minus n f e now turns out to be for every component i nu i multiplied by the detailed expression of mu i which is mu i naught plus r t ln a i. Now this tells me that I can very nicely separate out two terms from the summation shown on the right hand side and that is I collect the terms that are dependent on the mu i naught and I also collect the terms which are dependent on the activity of the given reaction mixture. And then if I introduce this notation the standard cell potential as E naught that is equal to nu i mu i naught summed over all i then I can rewrite this expression as minus n f e equal to minus n f e naught. Now we can introduce a standard cell potential which is defined through the equation written here. So as you see this is nothing but the previous equation that we started with but now the measurements are being done under standard conditions. And when I put this back in this expression what I find is that my equation now goes into minus n f e that is equal to minus n f e naught plus r t into whatever term that I had with dependent on the activity of the solution. And obviously you understand that I can now divide both sides of this equation by n f to have actually minus n f to have a much simpler expression and this is what you get when you divide both sides with minus n f. Now as you see that on the right hand side of this equation you have another term that can be simplified yet more and I have a summation over logarithms of ln a i. I understand that I can quickly rearrange and write it as logarithm of products of all a i's individually raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient nu i. And this expression which relates the E that is the zero current cell potential to the standard zero current cell potential and the activities of the given reaction mixture is known as the Nernst equation. Now what is it that we have achieved when we have looked at the Nernst equation? Now you see that we started from the most fundamental description of the system at hand in terms of its chemical potential. I had a reaction going on in the solution for which you can collect the concentration or effective concentration dependent terms and see what the delta R G is going to be. On the other hand, I understand that this chemical reaction is taking place in an electrochemical cell for which I must be having delta R G is equal to minus N F E. Now I collected these two informations together and now instead of having to calculate the chemical potentials for the given 
concentration of the reaction mixture. All I have is a relationship between the measurable quantities that are present in the system. Let us next have a look at some of the examples how, of how to use Nernst equation for electrochemical cells. Now, as you see, for this cell, the cell reaction can be effectively written as silver chloride solid dissolving out into Ag plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. And here I have omitted from writing the Ag solid that are being uh, produced on both sides. Now, in this case, I understand n is equal to 1 the number of electron transferred per mole is 1. Now, if I look at the different components present in the medium, I find that there is AgCl, there is Ag, Ag plus and Cl minus and depending on whether you have them on the reactant or the product side, you can add the stoichiometric coefficient nu to be either plus 1 or minus 1. And now I can write down the Nernst equation as E equal to E naught minus RT by NF where N is equal to 1 and this is what comes within bracket for the logarithm part. Now as you see here since the product Ag plus has a stoichiometric coefficient as plus 1. Therefore, this has gone into the numerator and so has the activity of Cl minus. But here AgCl it is present on the reactant side and therefore its stoichiometric coefficient has a negative sign in its balanced algebraic equation. And therefore, I see that the activity of AgCl now has come to the denominator. And so, I have been able to adopt the Nernst equation for this particular cell. But is this the final expression? The answer is no. We have adopted that if there is something which is a solid, its activity is going to be equal to 1. And therefore, the final form of Nernst equation for this electrochemical cell is going to be E equal to E naught minus RT by F ln activity of Ag plus into activity of Cl minus. Let us next take a second example which is the coupling of zinc zinc sulphate uh, electrode with copper copper sulphate electrode. In this case, the cell reaction is zinc solid is reducing copper 2 plus aqueous producing copper solid and zinc itself is oxidized to zinc 2 plus in the aqueous medium. Now, in this case, I understand that N is equal to 2 that is to be used in the Nernst equation. I also identify the different components which are present in the system and their stoichiometric coefficient to be used in this relationship nu i mu i. So, I am trying to find out nu i for this chemical reaction system. So, I find that for the reactants, the nu values are going to be minus 1 in both the cases. And for the products, the new values are going to be plus 1 by convention. Now, I can write down the equation, Nernst equation for this cell. So, once again, n is equal to 2. And I find that I have activities of zinc solid and activities of copper solid appearing within the logarithm. And by convention, these kind of activities are unity and therefore, I can write down the final form of Nernst equation as E equal to E naught minus RT by 2F, then logarithm of 
activity of copper 2 plus and divided by activity of zinc 2 plus. Now, if I consider a third example, in this example, I have the cell reaction as 1 mole of hydrogen gas is reducing 2 moles of silver chloride solid giving rise to 2 moles of silver solid and it releases 2 moles of H plus and 2 moles of Cl minus in the aqueous solution. And in this case, once again, N is equal to 2. And now, if I write down the stoichiometric coefficients of the different components present in the system, I find that all the reactants have negative sign and all the products have positive sign associated with their stoichiometric coefficient. Now, if I write down the equation, the Nernst equation for this cell, as you understand that I have replaced n by 2. And also, I have retained only those activities which are corresponding to activities of species present in the medium and I have equated the activities of all the solid components to 1 and I have also uh, put in the activity of hydrogen gas maintained at 1 bar to be equal to 1. Now, usually what happens is you do a further algebraic uh, simplification of this equation. As you see, you have the square numbers within the logarithm. So, you can take the uh, square out and this is going to be the final form of Nernst equation for this electrochemical cell. Now, once we know the how to write down the Nernst equation for the electrochemical cells, then we can explore the connection of the Nernst equation and chemical equilibrium. At equilibrium, obviously, you understand that delta Rg must be equal to 0, which says that minus Nf E must be equal to 0 and correspondingly, I must be having E equal to 0 at equilibrium. If that is so, then under that condition for the given concentration of the components present in the medium, this particular expression can be equated to the equilibrium constant for the chemical reaction taking place within the electrochemical cell. And then I can write down the Nernst equation as put E equal to 0 that is equal to E naught minus RT by NF into ln of the equilibrium constant. Now, this immediately tells me that the logarithm of equilibrium constant is related to NF E naught by RT or in other words, I can find out the K equilibrium that is the equilibrium constant for the electrochemical reaction equilibrium as exponential of N F E naught by R T. Now, see what we have achieved over here. Let us see you are constructing a particular electrochemical cell and you would be able to find out the equilibrium constant for the chemical reaction there provided you know what the value of N is, provided you know the standard cell potential, zero, zero current cell potential and the temperature at which you are uh, thinking about carrying out this reaction. So, this is one of the most important applications of the Nernst equation. It allows you to find out the equilibrium constant for a given chemical reaction. Now, let us have a, a, some idea about how to get the equilibrium constant from standard cell potential. Let us say that you have a situation where n is equal to 1, 
the E0 value that is the standard zero current cell potential that is given by some x volt where x is a positive number. And I would like to remind you that 1 joule is nothing but 1 volt into coulomb. Now under such condition, how shall I calculate the equilibrium constant? I will write down 1 in the place of n. I will put down the value of f which is 96,500 coulombs per mole. Then I will put down the value of E0 as x volt and then this is the value of R and this is the temperature at which I am doing the measurement. Now let us do uh, uh, an analysis regarding what is going to be the unit of this quantity which appears, this entire quantity that appears within the bracket. So on the top I have coulomb volt mole inverse and what do I have in the bottom? I have joule Kelvin inverse mole inverse into Kelvin. Now I understand this coulomb into volt is nothing but joule and therefore I can write that the unit of the quantities appearing within the bracket is going to be joule mole inverse divided by joule mole inverse. I could do it because I understand that this Kelvin inverse and this Kelvin will cancel each other in the denominator. Now let us go ahead and see how these numbers look like. So as you see that here on the left hand side column I am putting in different values of E0 in volt. And on the right hand side, I have put in the values of K equilibrium. And as you see, when E0 is very small, K equilibrium is a number which is pretty small. But as I go on increasing the value of E0, the value of K equilibrium increases rapidly. And that is because here X is present in the exponential and therefore with the increase in E0 there is an exponential growth in the value of K equilibrium. Now the question that comes here is for a given cell where are you going to get the values of standard zero current cell potential from and these are given in the literature which have been standardized using the electrode potential against the electrode potential of a standard hydrogen electrode and a standard hydrogen electrode as you see over here that has a 0 volt as the standard 0 current cell potential or a standard electrode potential at 25 degree centigrade and 1 bar. I have highlighted two more pairs which corresponds to the E0 value for the reduction reaction. First, copper 2 plus going, uh, getting reduced to copper 0 and silver plus getting reduced to silver 0. Now, I am going to use these data to show you how I can use these data while interpreting the construction of a, an electrochemical cell. So here is an example where I can uh, try and find out the E0 value of this cell that is the standard cell potential of this cell as E0R minus E0L. Now please try to understand that the data that I am showing you here all of them are reduction reactions. And therefore, the E0 values that I show here are standard reduction potential for the given half cell reaction. Now, when I have the standard reduction potentials at hand, then 
I know that reduction occurs on the right at the cathode and oxidation occurs at the anode. Therefore, if I am using the standard reduction potential in each case, the net cell reaction will have E0 value equal to E0 R minus E0 L. So, in this case, the cell reaction is copper solid gets oxidized to copper 2 plus while silver plus 2 moles of it gets reduced to 2 moles of silver. So, in this case, what I can do is I can find out that E naught R which is corresponding to the reduction potential for the copper 2 plus copper pair and uh, that is uh, taking place here. So, that is the uh, for the oxidation and this is for the reduction part of Ag plus Ag pair and the result that I get is E naught is equal to 0 0.46 fold. So, given a cell what you can do is you can use the standard reduction potentials at 25 degree centigrade and 1 bar to find out the E naught value for the given cell. Now, how is it going to uh, uh, help us? Of course, I can use this value in the Nernst equation and uh, find out for example, the equilibrium constant. There is one more point that I would like to highlight over here and that is E naught value is related to the standard reaction Gibbs energy and in this case the standard reaction Gibbs energy will be given by n equal to 2 and E naught is equal to plus 0 0.46 volt and therefore, I immediately conclude that the standard reaction Gibbs energy for this cell is a negative quantity and what does it imply? It implies that this cell reaction will undergo a spontaneous reaction in the direction shown under the given conditions or in other words if you construct an electrochemical cell and you check for the E naught value of the cell and you find that it is a positive quantity then you would say that the cell reaction that you are showing here occurs spontaneously and therefore in this particular case I would say that copper would spontaneously reduce silver plus in aqueous solution. Now going back to the table that I have shown you here I find that in this table copper is located higher in the chart of standard reduction potential and that means that copper has a higher reducing property and therefore if I construct the cell in a way that it is play the, the couple the uh, electrode that is uh, having a higher reducing power should be placed at the anode and the one with a lower reducing power should be put as a cathode and in that case this cell is going to act as an electrolyte uh, electrochemical cell and if I reverse the direction then this is going to act as an electrolytic cell. I will conclude today's lecture by saying that in all the cases that we have considered so far, we started off from the very basic consideration of reaction equilibrium that is in the condition in terms of chemical potential and especially when there is a chemical reaction involved, we said that it is easier to think about the direction of spontaneity and the condition of equilibrium in terms of the reaction Gibbs energy and in the case of electrochemical reactions we are now replacing the uh, description of the equilibrium condition not in, uh, in terms of the cell standard cell potentials and these are data which are available in the literature. Therefore, for any given uh, part, for any given purpose, 
if you are trying to construct the electrochemical cell, all you need to do is look up the data in the standard reduction potentials and decide if you can construct an electrochemical cell out of it. Thank you.